Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL Week 10 preview between the Oakland Raiders and the New York Giants. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Raiders. With Darren McFadden in and out of the lineup with injuries, the Raiders' ground game consists of Terrell Pryor, the quarterback, and Rashard Dennings, who has played some good football so far. But if this offense is really going to get better, number one, they're going to have to get better protection up front from that offensive line. And two, they can't get enamored with Pryor's athleticism. You want to use it as an asset and not a crutch. And in my opinion, it's the reason why the quick passing game hasn't developed so far. Defensively versus the Giants, I believe Charles Woodson will play a huge role matching Wits versus Eli Manning and being versatile enough to match up versus a guy, let's say, like Hakeem Nix or Ruben Randall, giving the Raiders flexibility in their defense. But Oakland does need rookie cornerback DJ Hayden to start playing better football, not physically, but mentally. He must avoid those blown assignments this week versus the G-Men. Otherwise, the Giants could hit big plays deep down the field. Now let's move over to the Giants in this ball game. And talent-wise, the Giants' three wide receiver set is one of the best in the league. Production-wise, it's a different story, and there's plenty of reasons why. Let's say the offensive line isn't giving Eli Manning time in the pocket or the communication between the receivers and Eli is off. Whatever the case may be, coming off a bye, the Giants can't have any of these same issues in the passing game moving forward if they want to make a run for the NFC East crown. Defensively, playing a mobile quarterback like Terrell Pryor does put a lot of pressure on your perimeter defense, which is why safety Entrell Rowe, who excels as a hold defender and an alley defender, will be vital to team success this week, as well as the linebacking core, i.e. weak side linebacker Spencer Pacinger, being able to stay disciplined on the backside. The Oakland Raiders have to be able to get pressure on Eli Manning when they go to their spread formation. I think if they go with an under defense, in certain situations, they can get pressure strong side. Let me show you how we're going to get this done. And this will be a dog blitz. We're going to dog blitz this backer, which means his job, his sole responsibility is the tailback. If the tailback stays in and block, then this is he is a free blitzer down at a gap. So you're getting double a gap pressure. Why? Because we have the nose tackle lined up in the gap, the a gap between guard and center. His job is to shoot this a gap. So again, the dog blitz is between the backer and this tailback, if this tailback stays in and block, boom, this guy is blitzing. If he goes out into a route, let's say he goes this way, it's his responsibility. You also have manned up safety guy, has the guy in a slot, corner manned up on his receiver as well as the corner on the receiver. You see where I have the guys aligned. You wanna funnel these guys outside where your, your help, your sideline is your help, and the safety is gonna have to do his best versus this slot wide receiver. But hopefully the strong side pressure gets there to where this is a guy that uh, is gonna make a quick throw. Now you have your backer coming off the edge. You have your defensive end crossing face of the tackle, attacking the B gap, because we have a twist with this backer here going on the opposite side of him. So you have double B gap pressure, double A gap pressure, and you have your safety manned up right here on this tight end. And these guys are your contained blitzers. They're playing contained here. So you see where you can get strong side pressure. You have a built-in dog blitzer here with the other inside backer. And I think that's how the Oakland Raiders can have success defensively versus the New York Giants in certain situations when they go to the spread formation. The New York Giants are still having some issues in their pass protection and this week versus the Oakland Raiders, I think they can get the football in the hands of their playmakers, i.e. Victor Cruz very quickly by utilizing the shallow cross with the back flaring out of the backfield, out of the pistol form so I know that's a lot. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here. You see how we spread the field. We have Victor Cruz at the top of the numbers. Why we're gonna bring him on a crosser. That's where we're going with the football. So we have to run some clear out routes to create that space and that opportunity. And we're gonna see what we have, what we like to call built in hot reads for Eli Manning. We're out of the pistol set. That's three yards from the center. Allows Eli Manning to set up quickly and get the football out of his hands. But on the backside, we have a two on three. So we're gonna run the smash concept on the backside, that's your corner and your curl. Your curl is your built-in, or your hitch is your built-in uh, hot read number one. Your second built-in hot read is sending the back out in a swing motion. The swing is the swing is a zone buster type of a route. So you're trying to pull this linebacker here to get him to get out on this swing. Now we're sending the tight end up the middle of the field. Now versus man, he's gonna break to the post. Versus zone, he's gonna break to the corner or he's gonna settle down. So he's reading the strong safety right here, but he's either gonna break to the post, corner, or settle down versus zone. Versus man, he's gonna run to the middle of the field. That's clearing out the strong safety. Now you wanna get this cornerback caught in the wash by buzzing 
Victor Cruz and then dragging him across. Window here, window here for Eli Manning to get rid of the football. And remember, this backer is going to be taken out by this swing route or this corner would try to jump this swing route, leaving this backer sitting right over this tight end, thus creating that window. So you see how the shallow cross with the swing on the same side of it creates that opportunity and also could create that could create that rub route between the rub between the linebacker and the cornerback. So I think that's how they can effectively get the ball in the hands of Victor Cruz very quickly and also move the football down the field versus an aggressive Raiders defense. The X Factor for the Raiders will be the quick passing game. They have to get that going this week versus the Giants. Their protection right now won't allow them to go with long developing routes. So the quick passing game has to be efficient in order for these guys to have success. And the X Factor for the Giants will be their linebacking core. Like I said before, when you're playing a mobile quarterback, it does put a lot of pressure on your defense, in particular your linebackers to stay home and stay gap disciplined. They may even have to sacrifice a guy as a spy defender. So that linebacking core of the Giants will have to bring their A game in order for this defense to have success. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ballgame. For the Raiders, you want to spread the field by formation, but you also want to avoid design quarterback runs. You want to utilize Terrell Pryor's athleticism when the play breaks down. Spread the field, give him a wide field to work with. It also widens out that defense, and then you'll be able to get that quick passing game going. And you want to get creative with the protection. That way, you can have time back there in the pocket to go with those long developing routes. Maybe move the pocket, go with a little bit of turn back protection, maybe hinge protection fan out those defensive ends having prior step up but you have to get creative with the protection and i will go with more cloud coverage versus victor cruz that's putting the safety in between the backer and the corner so that way the safety is in better position to get over top of the deep pass if they try to send him deep down the field or he's in the alley to better provide support versus a short quick pass so that way you can get him on the ground and for the Giants in this ball game, you don't want to get outflanked defensively versus the Raiders. It's imperative that you protect the perimeter versus a team like Oakland that can do a lot of damage on the outside. And winning on third down on both sides of the ball is key. The long sustained drives kill the will of a defense and forces their offense to press and make mistakes. Plus, you don't want to allow the Raiders to use their ultimate weapon, Sebastian Janikowski. Once he crosses the 50, he's within range. And you want to keep it sharp. The bye week gave your offense a chance to tie up its loose ends and your defense two weeks to prepare for a mobile quarterback in Terrell Pryor. I like the Giants in this ballgame. I think that bye week came at a much needed time for the G-Men. I think what's going to happen, their offense will look a lot more crisp coming out of the bye. And their defense will be able to contain what Oakland does offensively. Because like I've said before, their offensive line is really struggling. So I like the Giants to win this one at home. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Giant fan forums and Raider fan forums for always showing football game plan support.